So remember what's the, the main formula? The general formula is x times y, you get k, right? k is the constant. And what did we talk about just now? That just now we, we say that the price of x in terms of these two assets is really just y over x, okay? Remember, we, if we have, we had like 10 ETH, and then we have 500 LISA tokens. So the price of 1 ETH is really just 500 LISA tokens divided by 10, we get 50 LISA tokens. So this price is really the price in relation to each other. So if we combine them together, we get this new formula of what, what is the expected returns, or what's the expected price, given the price keeps changing. Just now what we did was we fixed the price, right? This is 1 ETH, how much LISA tokens you're going to get. So we rearrange this a little bit, you know, we we put, uh, let's say, so x price, let's replace x, okay, or x price times, um, oh, let's do, let's do x, so x, you get y over x price. So these two are the same. So what we want to do now is we're going to substitute this x into this x. x times y equals k. And now I know x is also y over x price. Multiply it by y, you get k. So y square over x price, you get k. And y, you get k multiplied by x price. And then you just square root the whole thing. So this is the value of y. Now let's look at the value of x. So what we have done here is to price the items in x. Now let's price it in y. So y, you get k over x. And wait, wrong. Uh, this one. So I use red. So you get uh, y, you get x multiplied by x price. So if you multiply this, so it's x multiplied by x multiplied by x price, you get k. So you have x squared times x price, you get k, and that means x price. No, that means x squared, you get k over x price, and x, you get root k over x so at the end of the day, these are the two formulas we're looking at, based on these two general formulas that we have discussed before. This one, and this one. Writing on the cardboard is really, really not fun. Okay, so that's that. Now, what happens, let's go deeper into, into exploring this, right? What happens when the price, so we know that this price, you know, we had, we had um, 10 E, and then we had 500 Lisa tokens. It's a bit harder to justify, but because it's easier in die because then you can trade it in the secondary market, but let's, let's just say this is the exchange rate right now, which is 1 E, you get 50 Lisa, right? Now, Let's say in the secondary market, in Binance, in Coinbase or whatever, prices increase. So initially one here, right? This is this is in in your DEX, in your decentralized market. Let's say in the outside market, we have one E equals equals more expensive. Let's say it's 55 Lisa. So this is um, outside market. Okay, why why does this why does this happen? You gotta understand that first. Because this price is determined based on whatever that is done in your pool. It depends on the assets available. That's why we did this entire formula thing to show your price based on the assets available. However, in the secondary market, in the outside market, people have other trading pools, right? And you have different price for it. So there's something to bear in mind. Now, what happens? You realize that, what can I do? I can just go in, I give one if, I buy 50 Visa tokens, then 
I can I can make I can go to the outside market or I, I use 50 Lisa tokens, I sell 50 Lisa tokens to get one E. I go to the outside market, I go to Binance, then I, I give them that one E and I get 55 Lisa tokens. So in this process I just do a little switch and suddenly I get free five Lisa tokens for free. That's free money. So these are called traders, these are called arbitrages, they do arbitrage trading. So they find difference in two different places and then they trade to make the difference and then that's how they earn money. So this is what is going to happen. So let's see what happens in this situation. Now in this situation, let's put them back into this, this situation, this, these two stuff, right? So let's say X is E and Y is Lisa. So this is E and this is Lisa. So what does it mean? It means that in this pool, in this DEX right now, an arbitrager, so let's let's do a trader. He can come in, he says, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna take one E and I can get, I pay 50 Lisa to get one E. And when I put one E outside, I can get 55 Lisa back. So I'm earning five Lisas for free. So the tr what can a trader do? The trader can take 50 Lisa tokens, Take out one ETH, so you have 450 Lisa and you get 11 ETH. It puts in 50 Lisa to get one ETH, so that means you have 550 Lisa and then you take out the ETH, so you have 9 ETH. And, I, and then he goes and take that ETH, sells, in you know finance and then gets 55 visa so this is the amount he pays this is pay this is get so it's free five visa tokens right you see that now so because of this situation because of this thing going on you know and then if you plug those information into this stuff over here, then you realize that, okay, the, the ratio keeps changing and the ratio will keep changing and rebalancing until, until inside the pool, you will get you, the value of one E will equals 55 Lisa. Okay, so this is, in the end, this will balance, right? And this will balance because you have these traders, these arbitrage traders, arbitrage traders, come in to see the difference, mitigate the difference, and get that difference out. So, this is what happens when arbitrage traders are trading. So, where, you know, if you look at, if you just look at this situation, it's like, where's the risk? You know, I put money in, and then people want to trade. People want to do whatever they want to do, let them be. It doesn't matter because when they trade, I still get to keep, you know, I, I get to have all these trading fees when it's going on. But this, this risk over here right now, the risk in this situation is called the impermanent loss. So this impermanent, it's called impermanent loss or whatever you want to call them. They, they exist because of these different trade. So if you, I don't want to dive so deep because we really cover a lot of math. Let me give you the, the concept first. And if you want the math part, we can talk about the math part because I don't want it to be too complicated. Because right now what we have over here is good enough to get you, un, to, get you to understand what are the risks involved and how, does the, how is the risk calculated. So if you just take a snapshot of this, you realize, you know what, it's fine. I have, I am earning fees from here and my tokens are still here. So the risk of impermanent loss comes when with these pools, so with these pools, let's say you have 10 ETH, uh, the, the pool is 10 ETH and 500 Lisa. So you have this thing over here called liquidity providers, LP. LP are liquidity providers. So you think these 10 ETH and 500 Lisa just came out of thin air? I mean, yeah, kind of, because the machines print them, but it has to be added in by someone. And so these someone are called liquidity providers. They provide liquidity. Duh, liquidity providers. 
And when they provide liquidity into these pools, they, they also get ownership of this pool. So let's say I provide 1 ETH and I provide 50 Visa. So, you know, the, it balances, right? And this, so that means I own, how much do I own? I own 10%. I own 10% of this pool. So, whatever this pool is worth, you know, how much money it is, does it, I, I own 10% of it. And also for all transaction fees, I, I keep 10% of the transaction fees. That means if, let's say, I want to liquidate my position, so my position, I, I this 10 percent here, and I want to liquidate my position, I can, I am worthy of 10% of whatever is in the pool value. So this is, this is the situation. Now, the loss comes because when traders, when these arbitrage traders are doing all these different, different funky trades, you're changing the different ratios that's going on in, in the system, in the, in the pool, and loss happens because the value, so the value of the pool after, after the arbitrage trade is less, less than holding tokens. So what do I mean? So if you keep, if this, this is what we had, right? We had 1 ETH plus 50 Lisa tokens. So I'm just going to erase that part and I'm going to bring this over here. So what we want to show right now is this, this situation of what do I mean by impermanent loss? Where's the loss coming from and how do we calculate that? Here we have the value, value of pool before arbitrage trade is less than the value of pool if, oh no, it's less than um, just hold tokens. So we started off with 1 E plus 50 Visa tokens. And after, the, the value of the pool after that is is less than that, okay? So the formula to calculate that that loss, you know, the, the difference, the formula is is two two times square root of price ratio so x. Two times square root of over one plus one. So the difference between between the loss. So this is your loss, right? Your impermanent. So your impermanent loss is this ratio, and this is for Uniswap. And this is based on the you know all the formulas that we talked about just now. And this is a bit more complicated, so I'm not gonna go into that because I realized that I get feedback, not complaints, because they're not complaints, they're just feedback, saying that it's too much and too complicated, so I'm not going to that, but this is the difference that you, you want to understand. Now this is your impermanent loss. However, the whole idea of this thing called impermanent loss is that it's not, it's not permanent. It's permanent. It becomes permanent when, you know, if this, if the price of, so the price is 1 E 50 Lisa. Then it became 1 E 55 Lisa. So if this is, if this is stagnant and Oh, if this is a, a short leap in the, the system, right? Maybe someone, whatever trade they, they, they did, and this was the difference. So the arbitrageurs made, made some money out of this, and then money went back to 50 Lisa again. They put all the funds that they traded out back in again. They have an incentive to do so. Then your ratio, the ratio in the pool goes back to this, 
right? Your, the ratio in the pool goes back to this 100 ETH and 500 ETH tokens. When it goes back to that, this impermanent loss doesn't exist because it, it returns to previous ratio. So it doesn't exist. However, it becomes permanent if if the if the pools actually change. So the pools they continue to be, you know, whatever whatever that is in after all these different arbitrage trading. So because of that, there's this thing called a permanent loss. And this is something that you have to consider. And this happens after uh, this happens outside of the trade because in the secondary market the value changes, the, the value is quite different. And so you we internalize the value. We internalize internalize the value through these arbitrage traders who will be trading the difference and earning a profits from that. So how do how does okay, so these exist, right? How do we deal dealing with these risks? 